All right, so you either live in Washington State or you're moving out here and you're wanting to buy a home. Well, you have came to the right place. This is going to be the ultimate home buyer's guide for buying a home in Washington State. I'm gonna walk you through every single step of the process from meeting an agent all the way up through close. So if that's something you're looking for, stick around, we're getting after it right now. Hey, Chris, myself and our team, we're getting phone calls, texts and emails every single day from people just like you looking to make their move to Washington State and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking at making your move to right here in Tacoma or up in Seattle, maybe all the way off to the east side, it doesn't matter. We absolutely are here for you. So shoot us a phone call, text, or an email so we can help you make that smooth move out to Washington State. And if you want to know everything going on right here in our local market, hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you won't miss another video. All right, so number one, let's get ready to go. The first thing we got to work on is phase one when it comes to buying a house, and that is the preparation phase. Now, during this time, you're gonna go through a few things, and that is what we're gonna do here today. So number one is going to be meet your real estate agent, and that's me, Austin, right here for you guys. Number one is gonna be the preparation phase, so the very first thing in that is you've got to meet with your agent. Obviously, I am happy to be there for you if you're gonna go outside of my area. I do have a vast network of real estate agents that. I can refer you to. Number two is reviewing the home buying process and this ultimate guide is gonna be all encompassing for that. We're going to identify your must haves and locations that you're wanting to buy. Obviously knowing what you're looking for and where you're gonna be looking for them is gonna be very important. We are gonna discuss signing a buyer's agency in the state of Washington. This is a little bit different for a lot of different states. So understanding what it means in the state of Washington is super important. And then lastly, as this whole thing ties up, it's about getting yourself pre-approved and ready to go with a mortgage lender. So the first thing that we're going to do during this process is create a home search. Now the way this works is you're going to be set up on listing alerts inside the MLS. MLS stands for Multiple Listing Service. That's what we see as real estate brokers when we're looking at houses. Have you ever been on Zillow or Realtor.com and you've seen a house that was on there but somehow it sold two months ago? That's pretty common. See, those companies syndicate directly from the MLS, but they don't really do it on a regular basis. So. Getting your search set up with your real estate agent allows you to see what we see in real time. So what happens is we're going to talk about the things that, you know, you're going to want to write down the things that you're going to need out of a house. So if you have, you know, maybe a kid, maybe you're looking for a three bedroom and you need at least one and a half bathrooms. What about a garage? Bedrooms, bathrooms, garage space. Those are things that you and other decision makers are going to sit down and have that conversation way in advance. There are also a couple other things that you need to think about, and those are absolutely must haves and absolutely nots. My wife loves an open concept from the kitchen to the front room. She likes to cook and bake. And you know, if I'm home and relaxing and I want to sit on the couch, we want to be able to have a conversation. We we literally do not want to be separated where she feels like she's in a different room in the kitchen and I'm somewhere completely else in the front room. An example of a absolutely not for us would be a gigantic backyard. We originally moved here from the Midwest and we had a lot of lawn care and it was not something that we necessarily really enjoyed. So we want a place that's got Maybe some parks close, it's very walkable, but we don't have to maintain a large yard in the process. So have those conversations. Think about what kind of bedrooms, bathrooms, garages you would need. What are some things that you absolutely have to have in a house? And then the things that absolutely cannot have in a house. And then I want you to go back one more time with any decision makers. And I want you to say, okay, out of those must haves, what are really, would like to haves versus must haves. 
Like, is it gonna break the bank? Is it gonna be no deal if a house has every other thing, but not this one? And write those down. Same is gonna go for neighborhoods. Write down the neighborhoods that you're interested in living in, maybe the suburbs or the cities, and really kind of just get an idea before that um, meeting happens, either you know in person or maybe you set up a Zoom with us and we go through that process. Now what we do after we get together is we're gonna build that search out inside of the MLS and it's gonna be generated via email. So once a day, first thing in the morning, you're gonna get an email with any properties that fit the criteria of what you are looking for in your home. During this first week, I think it's really important to take note of anything that shows up that maybe you, you don't like. So for example, if you see a bunch of homes in, let's say, Bonnie Lake, and you're like, this doesn't really fit our vibe. Make a note of that, that way at the end of the week, you can make that adjustment. In the MLS, you can actually favorite properties you can make notes on them. You can even ask your agent a question right there inside of the app in real time and we can respond back to it. So it's a really good source of communication and a portal for communication. As we're looking at these homes, the next logical step is to go tour them together. Now, the way this works is we'll basically set up ahead of time with the listing agent of the property, or if it's one of our homes with the seller of our property, we will meet at that house. We will do a quick tour of the property, and then we usually do a recap. I think it's absolutely best to look at no more than three, maybe four a day. Otherwise, it can be really easy to get lost, to get caught up in going through so many homes, and then you're gonna struggle maybe to remember the nuances. So one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring some paperwork, we're gonna bring MLS printouts, that way you can make notes as we go through the process, and then we're gonna grade those properties as well. So there is even a process for walking through the homes. For you guys, the biggest thing is really just to know what you're looking for. And the last part of the home search is to ultimately fall in love with the right house. Phase three of the ultimate home buying process here in Washington is offering. Now listen, if you're still going in this video, if you're still watching this, might be a good time to reach out to us, either phone call, text, email, or even set up a Zoom. That way we can connect and start doing this in real life. All right, back on. So we're gonna craft an offer for this house. There is something between 25 and 40 negotiating points on the contracts here in Washington. Now, Chris, our team's managing broker, is going to walk you through writing that offer. There's two of us here. One of us will show you the property. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach out to the other one and we're gonna do our own independent market analysis. See, whenever you and me are out of the house and you find the right one, you're gonna get emotional. No matter how logical we are, or no matter how serious we are, both of us get pretty hyped. So what we wanna do is we wanna have a third party person look at the home, run their own analysis, and tell us what it is worth to make the offer. So we're gonna write out this offer. We're gonna do a few things during this time too. Not only are we gonna write the offer, we're also going to call the listing agent of the property and we're gonna to explain to them how amazing you are. And most agents are not doing this. And then just to make sure they really, really get the hint, so they know what you're offering, we're gonna draft an email that attaches to your offer that breaks down every single thing inside of it and makes it very simple for the selling agent to present. We don't want anything getting looked over and especially in a market where there can be multiple offers on a single property, we wanna make sure that we stand out the best that we can. We also have the option of having, if you're using one of our lenders especially, have that lender reach out to the listing agent and vouch for how strong your offer is. Now chances are it's not going to be just quite that smooth. Probably going to want something out of it. They're probably going to want some money. Who knows? Each seller has individual needs. Maybe it's just a matter of changing a closing day. In fact, we just won an offer several months ago and we were not in any way the highest bidding offer. But when we asked, hey, what's important to your seller? Well, they needed 45 days to move. And while there were three other offers on the property, 
the other three had actually wrote 30 day closes. So when we wrote that 45 day close, it made that offer the most attractive to the seller and ultimately helped our clients win a house for 20,000 cheaper than the next guy. But chances are we're gonna be negotiating some details. Now, whether that's the closing date, whether that's earnest money, no matter what it is. And we will keep you in the loop through this entire process. It is very normal. It does not mean that the seller does not want to sell the house to you. A lot of times it's just simply a formality of getting things in line, but we're gonna negotiate out those details. Now, once we get those negotiated, we are in a place called mutual acceptance. Mutual acceptance means that you have agreed to buy on these terms and they have agreed to sell to you on these terms and everyone is happy about it. The next phase, phase four, is what I like to call contract to close. Now, at this point, you're gonna end up meeting a new party. Yeah, several new parties, actually. First being the escrow team. Now they're the ones that hold the earnest money, manage a lot of stuff on the back end. For our team, you're also gonna be introduced to our contract to close coordinator. Uh, so we are out helping you on a daily basis. We need someone to help with the minutia of all of the paperwork. This person on our team, their job is designed specifically to manage paperwork from start to finish they are a licensed real estate broker, so they're a great help to us boots on the ground people. Typically within about 72 hours, you're gonna turn in your earnest money. Now here in Washington, a lot of times we see that earnest money deposit be somewhere between one and 3%. So you're gonna make sure you have that factored in when we're crafting our offer. After the earnest money is turned in, we're also gonna be setting up our own home inspection. Now in Washington, we can recommend some amazing home inspectors to you, but we cannot choose them for you and we cannot pay them for you and we cannot schedule them for you. Now, someone from our team will be present during the home inspection. You do not have to attend. We're gonna be there to make sure we get all of the notes and the home inspector is also gonna draft you a big report and then share that report and walk you through it as well. If you want to attend the home inspection, you're more than welcome to though. Once we do the home inspection, if there's anything in there that we need to request to be repaired, this is the time we're gonna do that and there is a negotiation process that goes on once the home inspection is completed. Now, one thing people often do get kind of misconstrued or kind of mixed together is the home inspection versus the appraisal. So if you got pre-approved and you're going to be using financing, whether it's conventional lending, FHA, USDA, no matter what, VA, the bank that is financing the loan is going to send out an appraiser. Now the appraiser is not the inspector and the inspector is not the appraiser. Inspector is independently working for you to see if there are any issues with the home. The appraiser's job is to make sure the bank is taking makes sense. So they're gonna go out, view the property, they're gonna come back and they're gonna compare it to other homes to make sure the value adds up. Now, most loans have their own stipulations when it comes to appraisals. So for example, with a VA or an FHA, you can't have chipping paint, you can't have loose handrail. So if there's any of those things in there that need to be completed for the file to be processed, they're going to let us know and they'll come back out and check. Now those repairs have to be done by the seller, not by you. We're going to do a final walkthrough before we close. Now this is pretty rare. Most folks don't do this anymore, but I still think that it is really, really important to go out and lay eyes on the property one more time, just to make sure that as everything got moved out of the home, there weren't any big mistakes, there weren't any crazy accidents. The home inspector does a fantastic job, but the home inspector is probably not going to pick up the refrigerator and move it. So what if there was a rotting hole below the refrigerator? This final walkthrough gives us an opportunity to make sure the home is left in the proper condition before you move in. Typically that day, we're also gonna to go to the title company 
and we're gonna sign the loan documents. Now, out here, things work a little different than the rest of the country. A lot of times you sign your loan documents, you shake hands and you swap keys. Out here, that closing day is technically the next day. So if you sign documents on Tuesday, you can plan on moving in on Wednesday. In this scenario, we would go get the keys and meet you at the new house on Wednesday so that you are in fact able to move in when you want. So that is kind of the breakdown of the process of buying a house here in Washington. So the next steps, the next steps would be for us to decide to work together. Now in this case, whether it's me personally or it's someone in our team across the state, we need to get together and we need to chat. So shoot me a phone call, text, an email, even better book that Zoom call so we can sit down face to face and walk through this process and see what it looks like for you in real life. After that, we need to get pre-approved. Now we here at Titus Robertson Group, Living Tacoma Washington team, we do have fantastic local lenders. Local lender is super important in today's day and age. So many agents, and homeowners have been burned by big dot com lenders. At the same time, they've also struggled with communication and working outside the nine to five realm with banks. Now, typically think about this. If you're gonna go look at a house and you wanna make an offer on it, you work a regular job. Are you most likely to try to do all that before five o'clock or after five o'clock? Well. History tells us that the majority of our clients are able to see homes after the traditional work day is over. So we have some great local lenders we'd be happy to connect you with that can get you pre-approved, get the process started, and have that local edge that could put you ahead of the next buyer. Then of course, we're gonna go look at homes like we talked about. And lastly, we're gonna find that dream home here in Washington State. So hope you learned something out of this video. Again, my name is Austin with Titus Robertson Group and the Living in Tacoma Washington team. Until next time, I cannot wait till you're out here so we can show you around.